So now you're doing uh, your own stuff. Has this been like a plan you've been wanting to pursue for a while? Totally. I mean, like I said, I mean, I was always writing songs. Right. Um, and even, I guess, I didn't have any concrete plan, but when our old band finished, I kind of just assumed, well, I guess it's I'm going to do my thing now. Mm-hmm. And so I was, I wasn't writing a ton of songs, which is why I was playing university and stuff, but and then, you know, when we, all through Tokyo, I always, here and there, wrote my own stuff, mm-hmm. and sometimes I would have a burst of creativity and be like, I'm making an album, and then it would just fizzle. Yeah. Sometimes I wouldn't write anything for a year. Um, so it was always there, you know, I, I was doing my own thing before I was in this band, mm-hmm. and it just was circumstances aligning in the right way. Would you say uh, that's part of the creative process? Like, I mean, it just, sometimes you can, you can work at it, uh, but... Yeah, it just comes when it comes. Right. I mean, I really, I don't work at it. You, sometimes there's stuff to work at, mm-hmm. and other times there's not, and when there's not stuff to work at, I think I've learned that for me at least, you have to not try it. Uh-huh. You can't force it, you don't need to force it, I mean... If someone was, if I had a deadline and I had no songs, mm-hmm. someone was, you know, standing there waiting for right. me to uh, deliver, then maybe I could right. get down to business and workshop it. But as things stand, I don't need to do that, so I just don't force it. Yeah, let it be natural. Are you, uh, you're pretty confident then, like in not forcing it, that it'll come when it comes? And so far, it has. Okay. I mean, that's, you know, knock on wood that it continues to come. Right. But I've learned because. I first started writing music, and then I would write a lot of music, and I think the first time where I didn't write a song for a long time was terrifying. Right. And I know other musicians who have similar things, similar experiences, where the first time that they go, you know, months without writing anything, you're like, oh, maybe I've lost it. Maybe right. that was, Maybe I wrote all the songs I had to write. Right. Uh, and, then, but then, and then after that, it comes back. Mm-hmm. And then the second time it happens, and then after it's happened a couple times, you start to realize, you know, it's going to come in fits and spurts. Um, how do you feel about people who, like, go to a cabin in the woods and just, like, lock themselves up and are like, write this album? Do you think that's a good approach? Um, I think if it works for those people, it's a good approach. I've toyed with that idea, but I find that I'm at my most productive when I have the least time in which to be productive. Oh, yeah. I mean, this this week, I have nothing to do. I mean, I'm uh-huh. really, this was literally the only commitment I had all week. And so, I've also found, I've found myself, I don't, I don't feel like writing, I don't, right. like, whatever. Whereas last week, I was really busy, and I was just where I do radio I was working radio and I was just I had commitments every day working radio um, um, I host on CBC Radio 3 which is sort of the, the web portion of CBC right. which is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation if you're not familiar right and uh, and so when I'm like that you know I only have two hours of the day where I can even sit down and catch my breath I find right. that during those two hours I'm grabbing a guitar oh, yeah. and I have ideas all over the place whereas when I can just sleep in get up when I want I just know yeah. So I worry that if I were to go to a cabin in the woods, I would spend two weeks sitting in a cabin in the woods, bored off my ass, point. with no creativity to show up. Yeah. yeah. But different people, other people need that kind of seclusion. It just depends on how you work. Yeah. So now you're writing your own stuff, um, and I listen to it. It's, I mean, obviously different uh, than what you do with Tokyo Police Club. Would you say this is more your style, like something that you would naturally create? I guess so. I mean, it's certainly. Tokyo Police Club is you, every song you hear, you know, I'm maybe 25% of it, or maybe I'm 60% of it, or maybe I'm 10% of it. You, right. know, and, you know, it's everyone's sort of, it's, I couldn't even tell you any given song how much contribution I had to it because it just goes through the whole mm-hmm. democratic process. Right. Whereas this record is a lot more if I am sort of let loose in a studio right. with no rules and no one to answer to, then yeah, that's what I'm going to come up with. Okay. Is it, do you think it's, uh, more comfortable for you? I was just thinking because it's not it's not as electronic, for sure. Right, yeah. Uh, and you're playing guitar a lot. Yeah. There's actually no keyboards. There's piano and there's organ. There's no keyboard on the whole record. Right. Okay. Um, I saw that you have two EPs. Uh, one called Novels and one called The Lakes of Alberta. Can you tell us about those names? Um, well, Lakes of Alberta is sort of when I was talking earlier about when we were doing stuff and I would sort of write in fits and spurts. Mm-hmm. That was the one time I sort of suddenly, and it just kind of came out of nowhere. I was, we were in the middle of tour, and mm-hmm. I don't know, I just banged out these five songs that were all kind of about the same story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, I, this this is a, an EP, I guess. Okay. And so we had recently finished recording Health and Shelves, the second Tokyo record, at a Chemical Sound Studio in Toronto. 
and which is owned by these guys, Dean and Jay, who now are very good friends of mine. At the time, I didn't really know that well, other than we spent a month recording there, and they were engineering it. We sort of chatted, and I kind of presumptuously emailed them and said, can I come and record for free, because I have some money and I have some songs, and they said yes. Yeah. And I went in, and we just had, they had an afternoon free, and I just went in at noon and sort of banged out five songs, and that was it. And I really liked how cool quick it was and exhilarating and so then that that led into what novels is which is something that my friend will and i again okay uh hatched this idea where we went into this into this studio chemical with dean and jay and with luke from born ruffians and yeah, the idea yeah. was that we would write and record this thing in 24 hours and you couldn't yeah it had oh, to be yeah. all brand new and da, 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 da. uh and so like then that's what that was yeah yeah exactly and it was and everybody had one song and it was, mm-hmm. yeah, it was the best thing ever uh, how long have you been working on your own stuff then? Before you actually got an EP out, how long have you been, I mean, writing stuff that you were like, this is EP worthy, I want to... I mean, I... The thing is, my standards change all the time. I mean, before right, I put out the sure. EP, I thought I had an album done, uh-huh. and now and then it never ended up happening, and now I listen to the songs, and the songs are crappy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't try to put them out. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to say. But I think the EP maybe... There's nothing that I've written before the EP that I would really ever consider using, and most of what I've written since the EP has sort of stayed around in one form or another, so that was kind of the beginning of where I'm at now.